Okay, so we've just completed creating the back frame in synchronous design and then we ran it through simulation to analyze the part. After determining that our part was okay to use, uh, we're at the top level of the motor assembly and so let's take a look at some of the tools we offer in the assembly environment. Now creating the back frame was a top-down design approach but we also support a bottom-up approach where we can bring in parts that have already been created uh, previous to this assembly. So if I go to my parts library and select for example the beater and I can drag it into the environment and you'll notice it puts us in uh, to a relationship mode where we can start applying relationships and place this assembly in the correct look this part in the correct location in our assem assembly. I'm going to identify this cylinder and then I'm going to relate it to this inside cylinder. I'm then going to place a mate relationship on the bottom of the beater and because these are both the same depth I'm going to use this side because it's easier to see. Now you'll notice that the beater got pushed down but it's really in the wrong direction. I can either use the flip button or I can use the tab key to flip that to the opposite side. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mate relationship between that face and I want to pick using quick pick that face and it's going to align the part as it needs to be aligned. Now our beater is in into uh, the mixer. Now one of the cool things that Solid Edge offers is the ability to use a tool which we would call Capture Fit. Capture Fit basically ident or identifies the relationships used to place this beater and allows you to save them to that part. Now one of the neat things about that is if I have to place this part a hundred times I don't want to go through the same process of identifying all the faces that I already know I'm going to uh, place. So if I do a control C and now I'm going to place this as a, with a control V same part but you notice this time it does put us into the create relationships mode but it already understands that the first relationship was an alignment. So now all I have to do is since it understands the from relationships I just have to tell it where I want to put it. You notice that it pops it right into into position. Now in order to get that bottom uh, face what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my view so that I can see uh, where that bottom face actually is yeah. and pop it into its position. Once that's done then it's looking for the final relationship which is this back face using quick pick. I can grab that face and it's going to line the part exactly where it needs to be. So now using Capture Fit we can quickly place uh, parts that are identical using the same relationships right into our model very quickly. It's a nice, just a nice way to replicate uh, to reduce the amount of uh, replication that you have to do placing parts. The next thing that we're going to look at is placing a gear relationship. You can notice we've got a couple of gears here with a center drive gear. What I want to do is come up to our relationships and select the gear option. It's going to bring up a menu bar and uh, we can what we can do then is we can come over and we can select in this case we're going to select the cylinder and you notice it shows the rotation that it's going to identify this with. So what I'm going to do is come over and identify this cylinder and you'll notice that in this case it's actually the opposite so let's go ahead and identify those as a relationship and then we can place another gear relationship between this face and the actual drive gear itself and in this case we're not too concerned about the direction but if I need to change the direction it's easy to flip it you will notice how it changes it by just clicking on the flip button so in this case that looks good so we'll go ahead and accept it with the right mouse button click just as we did the first one. Now that our gears have been identified and created the next thing that would be kinda neat is to put this in motion. In order to do that we need to apply a motor. Now we support rotational motors and linear motors and in this case this is just a rotational motor. So what I'm going to do is identify this drive and then identify uh, the actual uh, direction and go ahead and accept that and we let we called it motor one and you'll notice that it added it to our tree and right here it is called motor one now if we want to simulate what actually happens when we use this motor we can come to the simulate motor command right under motor there we can just use the defaults and it places it into our timeline 
Now once that timeline has been created, we can drop this down a little bit to get a little bit more space. We can actually go ahead and start running that and you'll notice how the gears are being driven by the center and our beaters are moving just as they should. You'll notice all of the motion that's taking place there. So it's a nice way of getting feedback after you apply some gear relationships. In order to get out of that, just hit the select tool and uh, choose not to save that and you're on your way. So a nice way to, again, to simulate uh, any gear relationships and motors that you apply to your assemblies. And it's very easy uh, to use. Now the final thing that we're going to do inside of the motor assembly is go ahead and place what we refer to as a fastener system. Obviously when you click on fastener system it's going to ask where do you want to place a, 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 a nut and a bolt or a washer. So we're going to identify the top circle of the hole and accept that and then we're going to rotate and come to the opposite side and select the bottom cylinder which t gives it the depth of the bolt that we're looking for as well as the diameter. Now you'll notice we're using DIN standard here and I'm just going to go to the very top use this button head socket screw and then of course I can stack things if I want to put a washer under that button head but in this case I don't really need to. Um, here I might want to put a uh, plain washer and I can also put a hexagon nut and in this case we'll just use a standard uh, nut and when we click on the OK button the system automatically goes out and pulls those parts right out of the standard parts database. Pretty cool. Uh, very easy to uh, use standard parts. Now when it does place these standard parts it does it automatically by, from size and depth of the holes uh, but it does place them in a, in a um, what we call simplified state. So in other words if I wanted to unsimplify and look at the design state of that it'll actually show you now the hexagon uh, of that and you can do the same for the nut and the washer if you'd like. So again using fastener systems uh, makes it very simple uh, to place the correct size uh, fasteners in your assembly. Uh, again it's called fastener systems. Okay so we're done uh, placing parts in our assembly, showing you how to add relationships between parts, in this case gears, and then using a motor to drive those gears, and then using fastener systems to apply fasteners into your assembly. Let's go back to the top level assembly where the bottom of the mixer uh, is turned, turned on, and you can kind of see how everything fits within this design. The only thing that we're missing is some plastic part features such as bosses to hold the tabs up and actually we also might need some more air uh, to get into here because this motor does get hot. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and in place activate into the bottom, the mixer bottom. And again we can turn the motor back on because we want to utilize uh, the motor to get the bosses at the right height. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and under the thin wall command you'll find the mounting boss command you'll notice it automatically puts you in a parallel reference plane and you can change that if you want but in this case I'm going to find a, a plane that's planar to the bottom of these faces in the right orientation and then I'm going to change to end point and I'm going to come up and just get underneath the bottom of this uh, tab then what I want to do is I'm going to area up here and I'm going to include just so I can pick up center go back to my boss command and now when I touch that it shows me the center and I can lock into the center line. Now before I place that boss obviously if I want to change the size of it I can and actually I had one save called mixer boss but these are the sizes that I'm using for that and then when I'm done placing that boss I can check, uh, use the green check mark to come out of uh, the sketch environment and I can just give it a direction I want it to go down to meet the bottom of the face. Now you'll notice it, it, it uh, matches the bottom of the face. It doesn't go through so it's a smart um, uh, feature within Solid Edge. Now I want to place a second one over on the opposite side and so I'm going to use the N key to get the correct orientation. You want this orientation here. And so we'll go ahead and click that. Again I want to come up and get underneath the bottom so we'll pick that end point so we're at the right height again I'm going to area up, include, go back to my boss command. Now this time I'm going to change the height 
the offset height. That's this height right here. From 15, I'm going to change it to 5. And then I'm going to pick up center and place that. Now we can check it off. Go back to our uh, part. Give it a down direction. Now you'll notice the difference between the 15 and the 5. The 5 I didn't need quite the offset to get around this, but the 15 I wanted to offset that. I wanted to offset it 15 millimeters to get around this boss that's sticking out here. But again, they conform to the bottom face of our part and work very nicely. So the boss command is one really nice command uh, that we've included in uh, Solid Edge. And of course we're working under the ordered uh, uh, part in this particular, for this particular model. Another neat command and the final command we'll use is, is to create a vent in the back of this so that air can get into our design when this motor gets hot. So I'm just going to step over here and turn on the vent sketch. And once that's uh, turned on, you can see it's just a simple sketch, we can create a pretty sophisticated vent. Now you'll notice that uh, we have some uh, values here. I'm going to change this to mixer uh, mixer vent and you'll see that those values uh, in fact we're going to go ahead and set those as our default and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and identify just the outside shape and accept that and then for the ribs state I'm going to change it to single fence select them accept them but I'm going to skip the spar step I'm just going to go right to the uh, direction and I'm going to point it downward and you'll notice it will take that information 2D information and create a very again what I call sophisticated uh, vent uh, with just a simple sketch now when I turn the sketch off notice the rounds that were applied and notice how it was applied to this curved surface so again a nice command easy to use Everything that we do in Solid Edge, we make it easy so our customers uh, can create this type of uh, information or features very quickly and easily. With that, we can go back to the top level assembly, and you can kind of see the results of the work that we've been doing here. Um, the next thing that we're going to look at is wire harness and then finally draft. So this concludes this portion of the demonstration.